Today we'll take a look at this Sergius Mechanical Automatic Chronograph. Yes, it is powered by a mechanical automatic movement and it is first on my channel, so I will not only examine in detail this watch on the outside, but I will take a close look inside as well, under the bonnet, so to speak. So I will do a close-up shots of the movement and put it on a time grapher to check how it performs. Could this be an ultimate automatic chronograph, a Rolex homage? Well, in this video we'll try to find out. Hello and welcome to the channel. Yes, we do watch reviews and talk about watches on this channel, so if this is your thing, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on other platforms. I will have to thank Sestan Official Store and AliExpress for sending this Sagas chronograph for review and in return I will provide a comprehensive review of this timepiece and of course there will be a link in the description of this video to the official store on AliExpress. There are usually good discounts there, so don't forget to check out the link in the store. So, the watch. Well, to be quite honest, I took my sweet time with this one. This is probably the third or maybe fourth week that I spent with it, and the more time I spend wearing and analyzing this watch, the more I'm actually drawn to it. First and foremost, this is of course a homage to an iconic Rolex Daytona, and as far as I can see, this timepiece has no corners cut when it comes to quality or to functionality. Moreover, when it comes to price, this is possibly one of the most aggressively priced automatic chronographs on AliExpress, but we'll come to the price a little bit later. So, what do we get in the box? System packaged this watch in a no frills robust box, which can withstand international shipment. Inside we'll find a user manual, which actually does cover this particular movement, warranty card, a tool to adjust the bracelet and, of course, the watch. Dimensions. When it comes to dimensions, it looks like Saga has decided not to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and went with a classic 40mm case diameter and 20mm lux proportions. The bezel diameter is 38.5mm, coincidentally the same as on the ceramic bezel Rolex Daytona that this watch is taking a few cues from, to say the least. Lug to lug distance is 46.8 mm and end link to end link distance is 51.5 mm. The case height is 13.6 mm as I measured on this watch. This is actually a bit slimmer than is stated on the product listing, which is a good thing. For a chronograph watch that houses a movement based on the Voljus 7750 caliber, this is a respectable measurement, because due to the rotor and the chronograph complication, the movement tends to be somewhat higher than usual. All these classic dimensions will make this watch look good on pretty much most wrist sizes. I will do a few shots on the 6.25 inch wrist and on my about 7 inch wrist a bit later in this video. The solid end link bracelet tapers down to about 15.5 mm at the clasp and the signed milled clasp is 18 mm wide. On a fully supplied stainless steel bracelet this watch will cover just over 8 inch wrist or about 8.25 inch wrist if you unlock the extension on the clasp that is about 21 cm. So if your wrist is larger than 8 inches I would recommend reaching out to the seller for an extra link. On a fully supplied stainless steel bracelet, this watch weighs 151 grams and adjusted to my about 7 inch wrist it weighs 145 grams. Very good weight for a stainless steel sport watch of this style. Dial. Well, no prices for originality here, however, the execution is excellent. The print of the minutes, chaptering and subdial markers is clean and crisp. The hands are well finished and of a perfect length. And the minute hand and the chronograph second hand stretches right to the edge of the minute chaptering. The layout of the subdials is as we would expect with a running second hand subdial at 6 o'clock and 30 minute and 12 hour chronograph accumulators at 3 and 9 o'clock respectively. We have applied our markers that are filled with loom. Loom is not very strong, but it is okay for this style of watch. In general, the dial is very clean. I couldn't spot any QC issues with the naked eye. And 
Compared to some other cheaper homages of this kind, this dial gives an impression of higher quality and better finish. We also have three lines of text on top of the dial. Sagas went with somewhat small font, which makes the writing not very obtrusive and yet it creates a visual balance with the rest of the dial. I'm not fully convinced about the third line of the text here, but I will come to it a bit later in this video. Crystal and bezel. Well, we have a flat sapphire crystal here with a nice beveling. The crystal sits ever so slightly proud of the ceramic bezel. There is no mention of any anti-reflective coating on a product listing. However, I haven't had any issues with the watch legibility under various viewing angles. As for the bezel, we have a fixed ceramic bezel here with engraved markers. The engravings are crisp and clean and the bezel has a good quality feel to it. And of course, being a ceramic bezel, it has a very good scratch resistance. Moving on to the case, we have a mirror polish top and sides of the case. The quality of finishing is very good. As I look at the reflections in the polished case surface, I don't see any inconsistencies or imperfections apart from a couple of scuffs that I put there while doing the review. Sagas managed to get the finish quality to a very good standard. The chronograph pushes are secured with the lock nuts and we have a signed screw-down crown, which is protected by crown guards. The screw-down crown is well proportioned and is easy to grip and operate. The back of the case is closed with a screw-on back case. Sagas declares 100 meters of water resistance on this watch, which means you can actually swim in it. If you watch my channel regularly, you probably know that I am not a big fan of taking chronographs anywhere near the water. However, judging by the high quality of the construction of this timepiece, I have a bit more confidence in this watch. However, please do make sure that the screw down crown and the screw locks on the pushes are screw on nice and tight. You really don't want water getting anywhere near that automatic chronograph movement inside of this watch. Movement. Now, this is possibly a star of the show. Not to say that the watch is not executed to a very high standard, however, this is my first encounter with a movement based on a Volju 7750. After doing a bit of a research, this looks like a chronograph from the Liaoning watch factory located at the Chinese city of Dendong, which markets its products under the Peacock brand. I most likely butchered the pronunciation of the factory name and possibly the city name, so I would like to apologize in advance. This is one of theirs SL4 series of movements, with this particular model being number SL4613A. Learning Watch Factory has a strong horology history and produces a number of different movements, including ones based on Eta Volju 7750 caliber, with different dial layouts and complications. Since Eta patents expired some years ago, quite a few manufacturers started to produce movements based on the same design design, including Swiss Salita, for example, with their SW500 series of chronograph movements and, of course, a few Chinese manufacturers too, which is where the movement in this watch comes from. As I promised, let's take a closer look at this movement. A really good level of finishing, even a pillage, a circular pattern, which is usually applied by hand and reserved for a hike and timepieces. So, seeing this level of finishing in this watch is very encouraging. When it comes to accuracy, as you can see, we get a very healthy numbers on the time grapher, almost no bit error to speak of, and a good amplitude. And I even tried a couple of different positions. And generally, during day-to-day -day usage, and I had this watch for a few weeks, the timekeeping was pretty much spot on. So, to sum it up, we get a high beat that is 28,800 vibrations per hour, automatic mechanical chronograph movement with about 42 hours of power reserve, which is based on an accurate and reliable Swiss Volju 7750 caliber design. It hacks, that is, the running second at 6 o'clock subdial will stop when we set the time, and it can be hand wind as well. We can start and stop the chronograph using the top pusher, and the bottom pusher will reset it. Bracelet. 
Another pleasant surprise for me on this watch was the bracelet. The level of finishing is very good and the tolerances between the links are quite tight as well. And it might look like another $100 AliExpress homage bracelet, but this is deceiving. The bracelet does feel very well put together. We have solid end links and solid links and links are held together by screws. Then we get to the clasp and it only gets better. First, the clasp is really well finished. The mirror polished surfaces are done very well, all edges are machined and everything feels smooth. Then the clasp action. There is very little side play and generally the tolerances on the clasp are pretty tight, which results in a really good tactile clasp lock operation. No nail breaking experience when trying to open it or any issues with locking and unlocking mechanism. The clasp locking action is reassuring and snappy. Sag is also equipped this clasp with familiar on-the-fly extension which does come handy if you need to add another 5mm to the bracelet length. And we also have three micro adjustments on the inside of the clasp for more accurate fit. As I mentioned earlier, Sagas ships this watch with a bracelet to cover just over 8 inch wrist. So in case if your wrist is larger, I would recommend to reach out to them when doing a purchase. So, yes, we do need to talk about the price. Well, as I mentioned in the beginning of this review, this is probably one of the most aggressively priced automatic chronographs on AliExpress. At the time of making this video, this watch was selling for around 360 US dollars. And taking into account the build quality and level of finishing inside and out, I find this price quite competitive to say the least. And if you can get additional 20 or 30 bucks discount, well, this becomes even more attractive. So we have a really good watch here. Are there any areas that could have been done better? Well, possibly, and this wouldn't be a full review if I didn't bring them to your attention. So first, I'm not quite sure what's up with the wording on the dial. It kind of looks okay and because the font is small, it is very subtle. However, putting top chronometer on the dial does not mean much in this context and is to some degree confusing and brings little or no value. And in my opinion, Suggest could have just potentially dropped the third line of text altogether. There is another kind of interesting feature of this watch that is probably worth mentioning. As we discussed earlier, this watch uses an automatic mechanical movement that takes after a good and time-tested design of a Swiss Volju 7750 caliber. However, it also inherits a somewhat typical loud rotor, which the Volju 7750 movement is well known for. So, if you find that the rotor is a bit more audible than you would expect to, don't worry. It is by design, so to speak, and it is not very different from other watches based on the same movement, including Swiss-made ones. Other than that, I would strongly recommend this watch if you are in the market for a timepiece of this style. Great iconic looks, solid build quality and finish, and an automatic mechanical movement. What are your thoughts? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. And of course, if you find this review helpful, don't forget to give us a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And do check our other reviews. I'll put them on the screen somewhere around here. And of course, take care, look after yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.